السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So when we speak about uh, academic institute, uh, the first academic institute which was known is an uh, institute called Gondishapur, which is in the southwest of Iran and uh, close to the borders of uh, uh, Iraq in Al Ahwaz area. And this was an intellectual center of the late Persian Empire. Uh, which was a best medical center at that time. And after the uh, Persian Empire failed and uh, the Islamic Empire came, uh, so this center continued to be a center of excellence for academia with uh, scholars, and students, and even they have certificate for students in medicine. And then after that came the House of Wisdom, which was established by Harun al-Rashid in the Abbasid Caliphate. And uh, this was flourished uh, during the era of his son, uh, Al-Ma'mun, uh, from uh, 813 to 833 and continued after that, but not in the same power as in al Ma'mun area. So if you want to uh, define what the academic institute is, uh, we say that it is an institute which is dedicated for education and research, at the same time, it grants academic degree. If you want to expand on this, so it is mean a hospital or a medical center which provides education and training for undergraduate medical students or postgraduate residents and often affiliated with medical school and serves as a research institute and also a grants academic degree. So we look at this list here and these are the accredited hospitals in uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for training residents and if we can look at this, so which one of these we can consider it as an academic institute? Because we have 18 centers, and some of them are affiliated with uh, uh, with universities, and some of the oldest universities, which are the King Saud and King Abdulaziz in uh, Jeddah, these are the primary ones. But nowadays there is other schools which come in other hospitals and they are affiliated with them like King Faisal Hospital and, and King Abdulaziz Medical City. So all of these, so shall we consider only these are academic centers or we can also include all the centers which is. So in this way we have to define our, uh, or to change our definition for an academic center for neurosurgery. And if you pay attention to the numbers here, this is the 48, that means this is 48 consultant in this area, which is Riyadh, our central area, and together with it, Abha and Dubai. Uh, for 48 consultant neurosurgeon, and in the Jeddah region, the 22 consultant, there's a plus minus one or two, and the Eastern province about 15. So total consultants, about 80 consultants in this uh, 18 center. So the minimal requirement for a training center we can consider is to train residents within the approved structure residency a training program under the umbrella of Saudi Council or Saudi Commission of Health Specialties in the presence of program director and adequate number of qualified consultants, minimum three in our case, and sufficient resources for training, working educational environment, uh, operating time and operating equipment, supporting facilities like uh, neurology and other, uh, and other disciplines, and uh, a number of uh, and variety of cases of, uh, of uh, conditions. So uh, if we look at the academic institute alone, it is a non-profit organization generally. This is general speaking, not yeah, specific because there's some 
variation. And uh, there is eligibility department and there is a referral system in the, this institute which restrict access to care, not for uh, just for certain cases. So the uh, departments can select the cases which can be treated in this center. And uh, the diagnosis is already made in general. Yeah? There, is, you know, there is brain tumor, yeah, there is brain tumor. Possibly we don't know, but we can suspect that it is. And there, are, there in these centers, there will be subspecialties and multidisciplinary teams. Uh, there will be discussion about the case from between residents, consultants, students. So there is always discussion and consultations internal. And there are academic activities and research projects. And there is uh, equipment, uh, sorry. Uh, and also the, some hospitals, they uh, give insurance or malpractice insurance for uh, the consultant or the uh, neurosurgeons there. Uh, this is a, a paper by Professor Abdel Hakim Jamjoum, and he was rating the hospital in Saudi Arabia in terms of uh, publications, and this is called H-index, which is how much we contribute to the literature. And from uh, what he showed here, that the university hospitals, they have a higher uh, H-index in general, which means that they contribute more to the literature, more than the neurosurgeon working in the Ministry of Health hospitals. So the academic neurosurgeons in these centers, uh, they have kind of a quadruplet attributes or function they have to do. So they have to be excellent in clinical work, excellent in education, excellent in research and administration. This is a requirement during the evaluation of a consultant. So uh, these have challenges, of course. So there is increased regulatory control over the medical work, over the administrative. There is always rule and regulations, all of these things. Even the research, you cannot do research except it has to go through a research committee. So all of these kind of regulations which the uh, neurosurgeon has to cope with. And there is increased patient load because these are considered as a referral center. But the resources are always limited in all hospitals. And uh, the consultants are dealing with more complex and challenging cases in general. And the reimbursement or salary, the salaried position, so the reimbursement is not that much for these positions compared to private practice. And uh, nowadays we are facing this patient complaint, so the patients, any complication, expected or unexpected, they consider it medical error. Well, this is kind of, we have to cope with this now. I think this is uh, now the uh, culture or this people from the media, I think, has too much effect on this because they give medical error, medical error. I think it has to be changed because there's people, they have know that there is complication of this. Even they know that we tell them that the possible complication, but then they interpret it as medical error. And uh, they have to be excellent in time management and there is obligatory retirement age but there is exception for physicians in general. Uh, the salary here is almost uh, two-thirds of uh, a salary uh, of a private uh, practice or the income of a practi private practice in neurosurgeon. This is in the United States, not here. Possibly here also they have the same if you're working, the other different than you work in private practice. So the virtue of working in an academic institute is the presence of more condensed academic environment in general. And this will hone the knowledge and the technical skills of everybody. And the neurosurgeon will be more competent in managing complex cases. And there is opportunity for self-improvement and performing research. And the presence of residents also, this is an important thing, uh, can cover the service being as uh, first on call. And this will pave the way for a career opportunity. So for people who like to be in this without having pay attention too much to the 
uh, financial aspect of the career, so they choose the uh, academic institute. Uh, if they have the financial, I think the main difference is financial aspect in these conditions here. Thank you. Thank you for...